Welcome to module one of Men and Masculinities. To introduce the content we'll be talking about for these next two weeks, I will share four fast facts about my personal life. Fast in the sense that all the facts fit into one sentence. I am an American man who is a husband and a father. With those facts in mind, I would like you to guess which of these two sets of statements is about me. The first set of statements is, I teach at a college, I enjoy spending time outdoors with my two sons, I grill meats for my family, and I was a football player. The second set of statements is, I taught at an elementary school, I enjoy spending time indoors reading books, I bake cookies for my family, and I was a cheerleader. So, based on those few facts I shared about myself earlier, which of these two sets of statements would you guess is about me? Don't worry, you don't need to write down your answer anywhere. You don't even need to say your guess out loud. Just think it. Which of these sets of statements seems like it would be about an American man who is a husband and a father? If you thought the first set of statements is about me, you're right. Yes, I teach at a college, you knew that. But it's also true that I spend time outside hiking with my sons, that I grill meats for my family, and that I was a football player back in high school. And if you thought the second set of statements is about me, you're right. Yes, I taught at elementary school. I spend time indoors reading books. I bake cookies for my family, and I was a cheerleader back in college. But if you happen to think that the first set of statements sounded more masculine, well, why is that? Why might we think that it's more fitting for a man to teach older students than younger students? Or to play outside than to read inside? Why might we think it's more a more masculine form of cooking to grill meats than to bake cookies? Or more appropriate for a man to be a football player than a cheerleader? When we start to ask questions like these, we're initiating our class conversation about the social construction of manhood in America. At the start of module one, we'll first take a close look at the words of Bradley Hathaway's spoken word poem, Manly Man. Then we'll discuss what 21st century American society tells us a manly man is and is not. In the course of that conversation, we may touch upon myths such as the damsel in distress stories, in which a strong man must save a weak woman. Hathaway brings up the myth of the damsel in distress in his poem, Manly Man, but we'll also see multiple retellings of this myth when we next turn our attention to Wilhelm Kerner's comic strip, Hugo Hercules, as well as a critical analysis of it when we read a couple excerpts from Michael Solis's book, The Damsel in Distress, Rescuing Women from American Mythology. At the end of module one, we'll compose our first culminating writing assignment for the semester, Mini Essay One. Although the official due date for Mini Essay 1 is not until 11.59 p.m. on Monday, January 29th, I encourage you to read the prompt as soon as you can. That way you'll be able to understand what type of content you'll be looking for in our readings, to learn what specific skills you'll be expected to demonstrate in Mini Essay 1, and to determine which of the optional mini lessons on those skills you'll want to consult. I also encourage you to take the time to read the lyrics of, and or watch the video for, our unofficial theme song for Module 1, Bonnie Tyler's 1984 hit, Holding Out for a Hero. Where have all the good men gone, and where are all the gods? Tyler asks in the opening lines of the song. Where's the streetwise Hercules to fight the rising odds? Those might sound like difficult questions to answer, but trust me, it's just as easy as reading Kerner's comic strip, Hugo Hercules. As always, if you have any questions about men and masculinities, please either email me at cgreen at cerritos.edu or send a message to my inbox here on campus. 